during this election, voters are now deciding what will happen in five competitive races for the Texas State Board of Education. Some challengers are hoping to shake up the body that helps set school curriculum, arguing it's become too partisan. We want to take a more in-depth look with Jaden Edison, who is the public education reporter for the Texas Tribune. Uh, Jaden, nice to see you. Thank you for being here. Thanks so much for having me. Before we get into some of these races, though, tell us about the responsibilities that the State Board of Education has, because some people may not be aware of that. Right, yeah, and, and I think that's a, a common sentiment when you speak with the candidates who are running, is that when, when they've spoken with voters, they found that there isn't a, no, a lot of knowledge about what this board actually does, right? So the State Board of Education is a 15-member board that basically is responsible for overseeing what what's taught in the classrooms, what standards teachers and students are held to, as well as what are the requirements for graduation. And I would also add that the Board of Education is also responsible for overseeing a $56 billion state endowment, which helps fund public schools. So uh, major implications um, when it comes to this particular election. But I think the biggest takeaway when you're thinking about what does this board do is the fact that they are a huge factor in determining what students learn in the classroom and what standards they're held to. Yeah, big implications for families and their children here in the state. Uh, this year, you mentioned that eight of the 15 seats on that state board are now up for election. Uh, but really, there are five that you reported that could change its makeup. Why is that? Yeah, so um, as you mentioned, um, you know, there are eight races. There are five of which that are actually contested, right? So the other, the remaining three um, that aren't included in that count are ones where there's someone who's running without a challenger, right? So basically, uh, it seems like those seats um, are, are basically set. But the five that we are talking about, right, you think about the makeup of the board right now, 10 Republicans and four Democrats. So five is a pretty significant number, right? Some incumbents who are running, um, including the chair of the board, Aaron Kinsey, um, who, again, have a tremendous say in kind of what's what's taught um, in classrooms. Um, the one thing I would note is that you know, you think about, you know, the makeup now and really there has been criticism that the board has kind of gotten too heavily involved in party politics. And so um, there is hope among some of the challengers. And I, I would imagine maybe some in the public who are, who are ultimately going to support them um, that, you know, by voting for some of these candidates who can potentially help diversify the board. That will obviously help diversify kind of some of the thinking um, and policy discussions that are happening at the state board level. Yeah, one of those uh, five contested races that you reported about recently is for District 10. That's perhaps the closest one to Austin. It covers Bell County and part of Williamson County, just to give people a sense of where that is. Talk to us about who's running in that race. Yeah, so District 10 in particular, you know, you think about uh, the incumbent, Tom Maynard, who's been on the board um, for quite some time, right? And Raquel Sainz Ortiz, who's running um, against uh, member Maynard. And uh, again, as you mentioned, um, a very important race, you know, for many reasons, you know, Tom Maynard has been on the board for, for quite some time, right? And a longtime Republican, right? Former um, executive of the Texas FFA Association, right? Um, he He's taught in... He's taught in CTE, career and technical education courses before. And you think about, uh, you know, Dr. Um, Ortiz, who is currently a, a an educator um, at the higher education level, right? A professor um, of education. So helping kind of grow, you know, the next generation of teachers and educators um, in the classroom, but obviously has been also actively involved in the um, Texas um, Ethnic Studies Network, which is a network of, of, of folks who have been very heavily involved with trying to push the State Board of Education to diversify its curriculum across all levels. Um, and one of the important things being implement um, the long-awaited Native Studies curriculum, which, which kind of explores the history of tribes um, and nations across Texas and the U.S. So, again, you know, a, a, an important race, right, for many people and for many reasons, right? You have Tom Maynard, who's been around a long time, and Dr. Ortiz, who, who um, is maybe one of those people, right, who feels that the board has shifted too far into party politics. And so I'm hoping that her perspective as an educator, right, um, also, having she started her career as a sixth grade uh, public education teacher, so um, both candidates obviously have experience in a classroom. But I think Dr. Ortiz obviously hoping that her experience, especially you know her you know her her emphasis on diversifying the curriculum um, and making sure that all voices um, and people are represented within that um, versus uh, Member Maynard, right, who is pushing for you know, um, revising the social studies curriculum and continue to revise mathematics curriculum given um, the COVID era drop off that we saw in learning. So again, there's a lot at stake there, but a, a very important note, uh, race, as you know. Yeah, and 
as we were mentioning curriculum, there's been so much reporting about that, whether it was for reading materials for elementary school age kids across the state. Uh, so how much is curriculum a focus in some of these campaigns from the people who are running for these spots? Yeah, it's huge. You know, when you think about a lot of the Democratic challengers, one thing that stood out to me was, one, the, ed the experience in public education. You know, the one thing I would note is that, you know, this is the State Board of Education, what, which determines what students learn in the classroom. But there is no requirement that requires that a member has experience in the public education system, right? And so you have um, a slate of challengers this time around who have direct experience, active experience working in public education, right, who are familiar with the challenges that arose, um, you know, navigating the brunt of the pandemic, right, which obviously we saw major historic disruption um, to public education across the country. And obviously Texas was, um, was, was just as much a part of that as anybody else in the other state. Right. So, you know, um, you know, it's, it's, it's vastly important. Um, and again, just thinking about kind of moving forward, this board is going to take up um, revising the social studies curriculum in 2025, which if you think about that, that's vastly important, too, given that you've had many candidates over the last few years who've run on a platform that the way history is being taught in Texas public schools is 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 somehow you know brainwashing children or that you know there's too much emphasis on america's history of racism and its diversity um and not on other things right so when you think about that right that people who ran on those platforms are the people who are again running to have a say in what the social studies curriculum says i think that gives you a sense of just how important um the stakes of this race are such pivotal races, and Jaden, we appreciate you writing about them, and I would suggest anybody out there who is going to be voting on some of these to read Jaden's piece in the Texas Tribune, breaking down where these candidates stand. But Jaden Edison with the Texas Tribune, we appreciate you again. Thanks again. Appreciate you. Thanks for having me.